hello and welcome back everyone it's your girl cassandra olivia back with yet another video you guys requested that i do mannequin hair color tutorials and videos um you guys gave me a lot of good feedback on instagram and on here so i decided to just go in and show you guys how i'm going to do an elevated bob cut this is something that you do learn in hair school but i just add my own little personal twist to it so don't worry about being super technical and also another side note you might hear a little bit of background noise i do apologize i'm actually waiting in the line of starbucks waiting to get my treats for me and my family and we've been sitting in the line for so long i decided why not kill two birds in one stone and i'm gonna do this voiceover to make sure i get it done okay i'm back so here i am i'm just taking a section from the back and i'm just doing a rough draft of a cut meaning that i'm just going to basically go in and just start taking out some of the weight this is not the um end result and when i like to cut i like to just take my time take small sections or do what you're comfortable with i've been cutting for a long time now i've been licensed since 2012 cutting hair since i was a kid so i'm pretty good at this but i'm just going in i knew i wanted to do a bob but i just didn't want to start off with so much hair so i decided to just take some of the length off first and also show like another way that you technically can cut a bob but this is just going to be a rough draft of this part so i'm literally just going to make it one length and then i'm actually going to section it and go in and show you guys how to cut a bob how they teach you in hair school and like how you're supposed to air quotes do that um but again i could also cut a bob like this like i could really go in and just kind of eyeball it i know a lot of hairstylists do this that aren't licensed or just don't know how to cut that well so i mean whatever works for you is cool the only thing i don't like about this method of cut cutting a bob is the fact that if you cut a bob like this it's going to have a lot of weight in it meaning that's going to be really thick i like my bobs to be really flowy and lightweight and i like them to have a little bit of texture so that way when you move your head different ways it moves so i'm just going over to the next side and also i wanted to mention that um the shears that i'm using they are older shears and they are quite dull but i'm not going to use my expensive shears on this mannequin so if you see me like struggling to cut and some pieces are getting kind of wonky it's literally because these are some old behind shears but i was not about to use my expensive shears to cut a mannequin like i'm just not going to do that okay so here i am i'm just putting in like that line again like i said um this is just a rough cut and then we're gonna go in and i'm gonna take y'all to hair school so if you have a mannequin nearby make sure to grab it grab a comb grab some shears you're comfortable with and gra uh, grab a couple of clips so that way you guys can do the cut with me um it's only sped up about like 0.10 percent so it's not going to be too fast it's going to be pretty much normal speed but i just slightly sped it up just a tiny bit just because again i don't like my videos to drag on but just be mindful that it took a little bit longer than what you see here i'm um, gonna put this cut in for this video it took me about 15 minutes i believe 15 20 minutes but that's because i was trying to make sure my angles were right and everything so on and so forth so here we are to the part everybody's been waiting for now if you have not already please make sure to hit the subscribe button i'm literally trying to give you guys some free education because if you're anything like me starting off at hair school you don't really know what you're doing and a lot of people are really selfish and they don't want to teach you how to do things or they do when they charge which i also do sometimes as well but i just want to give you guys some free game so i'm taking a section in the back and i'm just showing you guys i'm going from left to right i'm just taking a diagonal section and i thought that this was going to be a nice little piece here but i also decided to go in and just cut it in half which is why you see me tuck some more hair up and i'm just going to start in the middle i'm going to use my fingers and i'm going to start cutting my guideline i'm going to move it closer so you guys can see but i'm literally just using my fingers and i'm cutting my guideline now in beauty school they do teach you to make sure that you put tension and you don't cut past the second knuckle which is that second line of your finger do i cut past it a lot of times yes <laughs> but um the reason being is that they don't want you to cut there is because your tension in your fingers there's a gap there after your second knuckle and it's not as tight so when i want something super precise and crisp i will make sure that i try to stay in front of it but is it okay if you go past it absolutely but you just want to be careful because this is an area that people nick themselves a lot I've done it hundreds of times so i'm just letting you guys know do it at your own risk so i put my guide in pretty straight in the middle and then i'm just slightly angling my fingers downward to create like some type of graduation because i want the highest point of her hair to be in the center of her neck and then i want it to gradually get longer on the sides and you'll see what i mean by that so this is the starting guideline and i'm just going in and doing the same thing to both sides this is my first time trying to record an actual haircut on a mannequin so please just drop some comments down below and let me know um my lighting how it seems and i also need to make sure that i um 
wasn't in the way so i was just trying to make sure i was moving left to right when i'm cutting typically when i cut hair i move the client so i'll ask the client to bend their head forward if i'm doing a bob with some elevation i'll ask them to tilt their head to the side and i normally ask the client to move but because i was shooting a video i wanted to move around and keep the client i'm not client i wanted to keep the mannequin stationary so that way you guys can have a better view of what i'm doing so I'm just taking that second section down and I'm just marrying that into my first section. So you can see right here my guide line, which I'm going to point to right here, right where you see the comb through. That's where the guide is from the first line that I made. And I'm just going to literally add some tension to the hair, bringing it down. And I'm going to cut right into that guide line. Again, you will see my shears. Um, not They look like they're glitching, but that's honestly because, again they are old so it's not cutting like it should but it still got the job done for this video but definitely definitely if you're doing this on a client make sure you have some really good shears that are not dull because you don't want to use dull shears i can't say it and explain it any more than that just don't do it okay trust me children on this one just trust me kids trust me so now i'm just going in and i like to work with the middle section first and then i like to marry the left and then the right side so as you guys can see, I'm just going back in. I took another subsection and I'm just starting with the middle of that section. And I'm going to start marrying that to the middle section at the bottom. It's going to be a little bit hard to see it because it's going to be shorter underneath and longer at the top. So what I'm doing is I just cut it at the shortest point where it started. And then I slightly tilted my fingers in a 45 degree angle so that way I can create a little bit of graduation. And I'm going to show you guys what I mean in just a second. I'm going to have my comb and I'm going to tilt it. And then I'm going to show you guys how to tell what your angles are by just using your comb. So right here, just follow along. I'm literally just mirroring each section. And again, when you first start off, this is a rough cut, meaning that you're just putting the shape in. And then once we're done, we're gonna go in and refine and detail it, add some texture, so on and so forth. So I'm literally just cutting straight across. You can definitely point cut if you want, but I'm just gonna put in this cut how we do it normally. And then I'm just gonna go in and point cut in between the cut. And I'll show you guys what I mean. I'm sorry if I suck at explaining this. I literally have been doing this for so long that I just go in and do my own thing and I was completely zoned out. So here I'm just grabbing this section and as you can see, it's already on a slant for me holding it at a 45. So I'm just tilting my fingers and what you want to do with this is gradually have it be more angled as you go towards the top. Not too angled because you don't want it to be um, too heavy at the top and you don't want to cut off too much. But you just want to make sure that it's at a nice angle and it's pretty much following the start. So you'll see, I'm sorry I'm out of frame at this part, but you'll definitely see how it's like on a slant automatically. And you just want to go in and just keep following that slant and just keep dragging it out, okay? I know this might be a lot for you guys to understand. I do apologize. That's why I figured I'll just show you guys better than I can tell you. So I'm just going in, bringing it out at a 90 degree angle straight from the scalp, and then I'm going to tilt it slightly. You see how it's already angled from my previous section? So now I'm just going in and cleaning up those ends where it's a little bit too long. And this is how you create graduation within the haircut. And this also will kind of create semi layers so where it will lay nice and flush to the skin and to the hair so that way it's not too bulky. You're kind of going in, doing the 45 to create that, um, that bob shape, but also to um, take out some of that weight. So right here, if you lay your comb directly against the client's head, her hair is tilted down. This would be a 90 degree angle going upwards is a 45. So I was just showing you guys the difference between a 90. So when we were in hair school, if you needed to know how to hold the hair from a 90, you literally just pull it straight out from whatever point. So for example, in the back, I will pull it straight out how I'm doing now. But then when you get to the top, you'll put the comb facing straight up and the hair will go straight up because the top of your head, if I were to pull the hair directly out, would be in, it would be up. So it would kind of be, think of a globe and think of the hair, you know, the hair is like a circle, right? So whatever point you're at is where you're going to have your 90. So it varies as you go up to the head, okay? So in the back, your 90 is coming straight back. And then at the top, your 90 is going straight up. It really just depends on 90 degrees from where you're starting at. So I'm again, I'm pulling this out at a 90, literally pulling the hair directly out. And then I'm going to slightly tilt my fingers. And I'm using the comb as my guide too on a slant. And I'm just going to follow this all throughout. I'm going to do this entire back section. And then I like to stop kind of in like the middle of the head in the back. And then I like to marry the left side and the right side. And because I want to add a little bit of um, layers in this and some body, I'm going to section out the portion at the very, very top on the right hand side where I want to add the layers. And I'll show you guys what I mean. I'm definitely going to keep talking through this because I just want to make sure that whoever's watching this is clearly understanding. And as you can see, the shape is already starting to be put in there. We just have to keep going. So whenever you first start cutting hair, 
I used to be super nervous in beauty school because I felt like, oh my God, this looks crazy. And then I would get lost in the haircut, meaning that I would create a guideline and I wouldn't follow it. And I was so focused on trying to get the line to be precise that I would keep cutting into my guideline, taking it shorter and shorter and shorter. And then I would be like, what side am I on? Did I start here? Did I over direct it here? Do I go back to the bottom? And I would just take so long to cut hair because I was just overthinking it. You just want to create your guide in the back. Make sure everything meets that for this particular haircut. So this is pretty much where I stop at the top. This section right here is the section I'm going to use to create my volume. So now this is this is just me showing you like from the top literally that whole section that i have clipped off is where we're going to create the um the connection between the front and the back and also where we're going to do the layers so again i'm just pulling this out pull it out at a 90 degree angle straight from the scalp and then slightly tilt it and then you want to just go ahead and follow that guideline making sure that you are angling it more as you go up see how i tilted the comb slightly so it kind of creates that v-shape for me and i'm literally just going to do this for these last couple parts at the top and then i'll be back in just a second to explain what i'm doing on the sides and as you go just comb through it kind of eyeball it as well and just see if it's feeling right if it's looking like it's starting to take form are you missing spots are there some pieces longer than the others you might have to go in and just fix a couple pieces generally when you do a rough cut like this um you will have to still go back in and clean it up but this is just creating the shape okay so think of it as you're putting in your rough draft and then your final draft will be done once you go back in and perfect it okay don't overthink it too much just get your initial shape in there and follow your guideline another thing i like to do is use my comb instead of my fingers to add tension or comb the hair down because the hair is straight i can do this for this particular mannequin but if this was a curly hair client i would not do this because it doesn't matter if you comb it down or put tension on it if it's curly it's already going to have layers in it so you just want to be careful when you do that only do this on straight textured hair okay so here i'm going in i'm bringing the comb forward to kind of over direct the hair in the front to make sure i'm not taking off too much um, length and then i'm just point cutting so that way it'll look more um what is it called more natural more soft it won't be such a harsh sharp crispy line so you can see right here how the shape is already taking taking form and then i'm just going to go in and split this little section on the right hand side or let me say my left hand side and split this into two subsections so i'm going to comb this down and then i'm just going to cut right into this and you can definitely see in the back it's kind of jagged but this is the general um cut okay we're going to go in and perfect it i promise you guys so i'm just going in with my shears and I'm just point, um, pointing towards the front, cleaning up that edge just a little bit. If you're ever cutting and you feel like, okay, I'm scared, I don't wanna do too much, it's better to take off less than more. Meaning that if you feel like you wanna start the bob, let's say at the top of the neck, and you want it to be really sharp, I would start it a little bit lower, maybe an inch or two lower than I want it, and that way I'll work up to the length that I want. It's always easier to cut off more hair, but once you cut off too much hair, it's hard to put it back, okay? So make sure if you're doing this, you are taking your time, especially if you have a client that's really particular about what they want. There's nothing worse than asking for a haircut or a hair trim and somebody just does too much because they get lost in the cut or they're just taking off too much. So I always start longer and go shorter. So I did want this to be a little bit asymmetrical. So I'm going to do this side slightly shorter than the um, right hand side. And also, I already pre put the part in before I started. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier because I'm back home now. Um, but you just want to make sure you put your part in and you just follow your guideline, okay? Wherever my part is, I pretty much want this mannequin slash client to wear hair to the right. So I'm going to put the part in the left, and this is how it's going to be styled. Um, if you have a client that wants a middle part, you'll do the same thing, put their part in the center. Always put them in the mirror and have them approve it first, and then I'll go in and start my cut. But I really, really love side parts, and I just like the side scoop in the front. So that's what we're going to do. And again, I'm just going in here and just point cutting. So as you can see, this is how it looks already, just a rough draft. And then we're just gonna go in and perfect it. So we're gonna finish the other side first, and then we're gonna go in and really, really finesse this cut. Right here, I'm using my comb instead of my fingers to hold the hair. Again, this is pretty straight hair, so I don't have to worry about it being too off. And I'm just taking off a little bit um, a little bit less than I would if I were holding it with my hands because I want to make sure I have room to cut up a little bit higher. So I'm making this longer on this side because I already know I want it to be 
um, like an asymmetrical bob. So I definitely want this tie to be longer, but it's not going to be this long. But I'm just starting, you know, long, and then I'm just going to keep taking it up to where I feel comfortable. Okay, so the trick with hair cutting is just take your time, take small sections. If you want to take off an inch, or let's say, for instance, you want to take off three inches. Take off maybe an inch and a half first and then work your way up to the last like inch and a half, okay? So we got this general shape right here. It's looking pretty okay. One side is longer than the other, but um, this side is a little bit too long. So I'm going to go in and start point cutting and I'm just going to do my thing. I'm sorry if I'm talking way too much and I'm repeating a lot. I just want to make sure you guys get it. And again, I'm angling my comb and I'm slightly moving it forward so that way it'll create a little bit of motion and it'll blend when my client moves. So um, also when I do bobs, again, I move my client's head around a lot. I have them look up, look down, shake their head to the right, to the left, because there's nothing worse than seeing somebody with a bob cut. And then when they turn their head, there's a piece that's hanging longer underneath because you missed it. <laughs> so done that before too, being in hair school. Thought I cut a bob, thought I was doing my thing. Go back to take pictures of it. And it's like a long random piece underneath that I have to try to cut and finesse. So just make sure that you take your time. And now I'm just going into those sections. As you can see, I'm pulling it out pretty even and I'm just point cutting. So I'm just moving the head so you guys can see and I'm just gonna continue to follow that guideline. So you can see right through it now. I'm literally following that first line that I put in that I connected to the back and now I'm just going to connect the sides. Now, when you guys want to do a bob haircut or just a haircut, um, like I guess this in general, I don't know what else to word this as. You wanna make sure that you don't cut too much underneath, meaning that the section that I have out now, I'm gonna leave it as is. I'm gonna point cut into it a little bit, but I'm not going to pull it out at a 90 because if I were to pull it out at a 90 and try to connect it to the top, it's gonna to end up taking some of that length off. And that's how you get some of those uneven haircuts because you bring it out too much. So I'll show you what I mean in a few. When I start to do the next two sections, when I start to blend everything, I'm gonna leave the very, very bottom, about two inches, maybe three inches underneath where this section is now. I'm gonna leave this untouched and then I'm gonna point cut and really finesse the section that's clipped up at the top. And you'll see what I mean in just a second. And I'm always checking my haircut. I'm always seeing how my lines look. And I'm trying to see, you know, how my, my draft is looking. So far, so good. I know I have to clean it up a little bit more, but we're on the right path. Overall, it's graduated, so that's good. So I did move this up so you guys can see when I'm cutting the very top section when I bring it out. Um, I'm just taking this section here, again, just marrying it to the very bottom underneath. I'm sorry that this is cut off slightly, but I really wanted to make sure you guys can see what I'm doing at the top. So the step that I just did where I just took the section down and just followed the guide, I'm literally doing the same exact thing, okay? I'm just grabbing another section. So now this is the part that I was just talking about. I'm leaving that section underneath about three inches alone, and I'm gonna take this section right here, and I'm gonna start point cutting into it okay so i already know that i'm going to cut off about an inch of this because it has to match the side and then once i do that i'm going to go in and point cut it more so i just went ahead and point cut it but then i just cut it directly across and now i'm going to go in there's different ways you can point cut as well you can point cut the ends or you can take your shears and cut into the actual length which is why you see my hand about an inch down so i can really cut in there and get some nice layers going the goal for this is to have movement and body okay so again i'm going to take this section I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna bring it out at a 90 degree angle. I am marrying this to the back as well. I'm following my guide, but then I'm also gonna bring it out just the top section. You see how I'm not pulling anything from underneath. Just this section is what I'm gonna go in and point cut because this is where I want the volume and the layers to be. And I don't wanna cut into the um, asymmetrical side that's really long because then it will be a disaster. So just be sure to make sure you leave some hair underneath out and you do not cut into that hair. Now, just to marry the back, you see I'm just taking that section that I just cut at a 90 and point cut it. Now, I'm just bringing it to the back. I'm over directing it to the back and I'm going to blend this into what I've already done in the back. Why do you do this, Cassandra? Well, I'm doing this. <laughs> I really just asked myself a question like that. Was that third person? But yeah, why are you doing this, Cassandra? I'm doing this because when she pushes her hair back, I want it all to be nice and just seamless. I don't want you to be able to tell where I cut the back, where I cut the front. 
most people when they wear bobs they just wear it down or to the side but let's say she pulls her hair back for whatever reason it's still going to have a nice shape and a nice blend there's not going to be any uneven lines so i'm literally just pulling that back into the section i did in the back and i'm just point cutting into it to add some layers and dimension and then i'm gonna comb it all back in a sec uh, in a second so you guys can see exactly what i mean so i'm just pulling the top section you know small sections equals small mistakes I also learned, I learned this from Anthony Cutts watching his online class a long time ago. Um, he always says small sections means small mistakes. So if you do make a mistake in a tiny section, it's easier to hide than trying to make a mistake in a huge section, okay? So you see how this shape looks when I comb it back? So when she goes to run her fingers through, it's all just nice and smooth. It still has a nice bob shape and it's nothing that's really like sticking out. So this is the rough cut and now we're just gonna go in and I'm really gonna start to clean this up. So when I do bobs, I like to tilt my mannequin's hair forward or slightly to the side. And then I like to work on my point cutting in the back. And I like a really, really crispy line. And I also like nice graduation. But another thing that matters to me is just having a nice crisp neckline. And I'll show you guys what I mean. The devil is really in the details, okay? So now I'm just taking that back section and I'm point cutting into this with a little bit of that top section. Um, so I'm taking the back top and the front top and I'm just point cutting into that. Again, making sure that everything is married and just all in unison. So that way, again, when this person wants to wear their hair, it has nice body dimension and it just flows, not too much weight. And it's just like a seamless blend. So now I'm just going to pull out this section in the back that we blunt cut. And I'm just going to go in and just point cut it. I want most of my layers to be back here in case they wear it side to side, front to back. And I'm generally just going to take about the top section of the head and point cut the top. The bottom I'm going to leave alone because we do not want to cut into our um, guide line. We don't want to cut into that bob line. So again, you see how I left that two, two to three inches out on the bottom. I'm just going to point cut the top. So that way it'll be blended, but we'll still have the length. And I'm not doing too, too much because if you overly point cut, then you'll have like jagged lines in the haircut. So I'm just doing it ever so gently. I'm kind of just eyeballing it, seeing what I want to do, taking out some weight. I'll take it down and then I might go back in and cut it again. It's better to cut a little bit, take an eyeball, look at it. <laughs> I mean, eyeball it, but it's better to cut a little bit and eyeball it than to cut too much. And then you're like, oh, shoot, now I got to fix this whole haircut. Been there, done that. I'm trying to save you guys the headache, okay? So I'm just going in more. I felt like I could have added more layers to this side because it's shorter. So I'm just going in and really point cutting this so that way it has a nice, nice blend. So this is the rough cut. And now we're just going to go in and start to blend this out. This mannequin is only air dried. Um, I did not blow dry it, so I'm just going in. I'm also slide cutting the front because I wanted to just frame her face a little bit. And then I'm just gonna go in really quickly and press out this entire mannequin, okay? Once I'm done pressing it out, then I'll go in and perfect the cut because now I know the hair is as straight as it's gonna be and it's gonna come out super even. So I just like to take the two shortest sections in the back, take small, small sections because you don't wanna have too much in your flat iron. And I'm just dragging it down when you're doing this, you don't want to bump it too hard. When I first started doing bobs, I used to try to bump the hair really hard. And it was given like Easter Sunday. It was given like hard mushroom. And you don't want that, okay? You want it to be really soft and sexy. So I'll bring it out and then I'll drag it down towards the ground. Um, the flat iron, that bevel edge of the flat iron will automatically bump the hair for you. So you don't have to bump it too hard, okay? So I'm literally just dragging this. And you'll see what I mean in just a second. Just drag it down. And when you're doing this, just sink drag it down towards the floor. You don't have to do anything crazy with your wrist. Just let the iron do the work for you. And you guys already know how I felt about this color. I definitely hated it. I liked how I was blending in the back a little bit. It just was not good. It was so hollow. You see some spots, it's like over bleached, but it's because I told you guys I mixed the lightener in the last video a little bit too loosely and it was just moving through the hair, which I expected, but I mixed it. So I just had to stick with it. So I'm really finessing the hell out of this color with this cut. So that way when I post it on the gram, it'll look semi-decent. And sometimes you have to do that. We don't always do perfect work, 
but because I say I recorded this, I'm going to try to make it look as best as possible, okay? But I'm also very blunt with you guys. So that's why I let you guys know in the last video, hey, I don't really like it. It's okay, but I could have definitely done a way better job, okay? I'm very blunt with myself, and I like to be blunt with my clients too. So if somebody were to ever send me this and say, I want this, I would say no. <laughs> I would say not this exactly. Let me go in and really blend you out. So I'm just doing the same thing. On this side, I'm dragging everything down towards the ground, letting the iron do the work for me. And then I'm going to go in and really start to finesse this cut. I cannot wait. Now, towards the top, I do want to have a little bit of volume. So I'm going to bring the, um, the iron out at about a 90 degree angle from the scalp. And then I'm going to drag it down. And this next section, I bent it a little bit too much. I flicked my wrist. And you'll see how it's super, super tightly curly. You don't want that, okay? So I have to go back over that, press it, make sure it's straight. Because we don't want it to be um, too harsh. I want it to be really, really soft and sexy. And I want... If this was a real person for her when she moves it just moves with her it's not going to be like too um set in stone i want it to be a pretty free-flowing bob with lots of movement and lots of um lots of angles okay so i'm just bringing this towards the face dragging it down because i do want this part of the hair to be towards the face so i typically like to just drag it where i want it to lay so now we're done this last piece um and actually after i cut this i was really liking the color at the top kind of um still not my fave but i liked it much better than i liked it in the last video once we did the cut so now i'm just taking a wide tooth comb and i'm just going to comb through and bring it back and just see how this is moving see how everything's laying see how the layers are looking and then i'm going to go in and fix it so this is how this side looks already when i comb it back and then i just you just want to play around with it comb it different ways comb it to the side comb it back um if you have a part in it you don't have to worry about trying to comb this to the um the other side of the head because we want it to go this way but I just want to make sure if they comb it back down towards the front, it looks good from any angle. I try to think of it like if the wind blows, is my client's hair going to look nice? If she shakes her head, yes, is it going to look nice? Like I'm thinking of every possible situation. When she looks down, is it going to be blended still? When she looks to the side, it's going to be blended. Somebody walk up behind her at the grocery store, is it going to look nice on her neck? Like I'm thinking of everything because you are not going to catch my clients out here slipping, period. So... I do comb this a lot, but again, it's just to check everything. So I'm seeing how this is laying, and I'm really, 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 really loving how this is sitting. And this is why I cut it towards the back, too. As you can see, how it's just marrying into the back section, and it's giving us really, really soft but sexy layers. But it still has that shape in there. And you just want to go in and, you know, clean it up. There are a couple pieces that I do need to go in and trim. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. But I just want to show you guys kind of my method on how I cut and what I'm looking for. So typically... I curled it in her face. I want the hair to be in her face. I want these pops of color to really be like the focal point of this cut. Um, there's some little straggly pieces here. So I'm looking at it. This side looks pretty okay. But I just want to go in and refine it. And I want a hairline detail. So I'm not hairline. I want to um, detail the nape of the neck. So I'm looking at how this is combing over. And I'm like, eh, I need to go in and do a little bit more. But again, just play around with this. See how it's laying. And then go in and do what needs to be done, Okay. I don't really know how to describe it. I just, I get really creative with my haircuts. I just want it to look nice from all angles. So she, for whatever reason, want to comb it all to the left or to the right, it looks good. So this is what I'm talking about, about the neckline. I'm pressing my comb down and I'm just going in and point cutting her neckline. So that way everything looks nice and clean. And it's giving you like a nice, kind of like a, it's like a soft U shape, a soft upside down U, maybe a, a rainbow. I don't know. It's just like a upside down you <laughs> and i just want this to be like nice and clean so i will go in and clean this up on the sides and in the back because you want it to lay nicely now look how much better this looks already how it's sitting and this is what i'm talking about somebody comes up behind her they're gonna be thinking like damn this bob is the shit <laughs> and that's what i want them to think so i'm point cutting i want it to look natural but i want it to be really really crisp and i want it to be clean So I just got to this side and right here I noticed it was a little bit of weight and that's like a harsh line going straight across. I'm going to cut into that line to blend it and then I'm also going to direct the hair forward just to go in and make that more angled. And I am going to point cut and just bevel into that so that way it has a nice, nice blend. I don't want anything to look blocky. So this is me just cleaning it up and as you can see the haircut is really starting to come to life and it's just sitting this is how I want my client's hair to be when they wake up. I just want it to be pretty much effortless and get up and go. No matter how you wear it, if you style it, if you don't style it, it's still going to look nice. The cut really sets the tone for how the hair is going to lay and everything. So this is really, really important to me. So I'm just going to move this around. 
I'm playing around with the layers. I'm seeing how it looks. And again, if this was a real client, I would have her shaking her head, looking back, forward, all of that. I just want to make sure that this looks good from every possible angle. So I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. And um, please let me know if you recreate this. Just tag me in it. I'm going to comb through this a little bit more. I'm getting ready to eat dinner. It is Jan oh, no, my God, January. It's December 31st. My sister's birthday is tomorrow. I can't wait to drop the video of me transforming her hair with the wig. And I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you for everybody who commented and said they wanted this haircut. I hope this really does help somebody out there that's in cosmetology school or somebody that just wants to learn how to cut a bomb ass bob. And um, I will see you guys in the next video. Drop some love below. Look at how this is falling. Just look at it. Like, it's, it's so blended in the bag. Like, why did I do it like this? Like, I didn't even have to snap on this girl like this. Um, Typically, if this was a client too, I would go in and just define it like a little bit more but because it's a mannequin i'm not going to do all of that i was pretty much tired at the at the end of this so i'm just combing everything back and just showing you guys how it looks and again just go in point cut do what you feel like needs to be done i will literally keep going until the haircut feels right in my soul that's the best way to describe it so thank you guys so much for watching please subscribe and i can't wait to come out with new content for you guys in the new year please make sure to share my videos tell everybody tell your kids tell your wife all of that and I will see you guys in the next video. She looks so, so good, ready to go, okay? It's giving, can I speak to your manager? No, I'm just kidding. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope everybody has a wonderful and productive evening. Happy New Year. Don't turn up too much. And let's crush these goals in 2022. And I'm Audi. Bye.